So today, and I guess more importantly this year, I kind of want to start going into more of what I do professionally and show you guys a little bit more behind the curtain. So as a professional first AC or focus puller, I figured there's nothing better to start with than my focus pulling station that I've been using for most of the jobs this year. Now I have since upgraded, but I thought you guys might be interested in kind of what I recommend as a good beginner professional level focus pulling station. Now, obviously there's gonna be some things below and some things above this. This is kind of the level I recommend to start at for actual paid jobs. Um, anything below this, kind of gets iffy, especially with regards to screen sharpness and reliability. So if you want, that is a chance you could take, but part of the job is also optics. So if you don't look like you have the correct gear for the job, you might not get that call again. Now, quite a few jobs, especially as you get more experienced, are going to have higher technical requirements and higher budgets, and this kind of pulling station isn't really going to be appropriate for those jobs, but that's for another video. So with that, let's go ahead and break it down. Okay, so the main parts of the build are going to be the Tilta Nucleus M follow focus system, the small HD 702 Bright, the Hypercore Neo Slim batteries, and finally the backbone, the wooden camera V3 director's monitor cage. Now first, let's go over some of the modifications that I've made to the Nucleus M follow focus system. But before we do, if you have time and enjoy the video, a like is as always very much appreciated. If you wanna see more like this, a subscription is also very much appreciated. But if not, that dislike button works extra well if you hit it twice. All right, so first taking a look at my hand unit, you'll notice that there are some kind of distinct changes going on to it that most Nucleus M's don't necessarily have. So let's go over the 3D printed part that is on the wheel itself. Now, this is actually a wheel I got from another AC on Instagram. Um, I'm not entirely sure on how to actually pronounce the name, but I will go ahead and link to the Instagram and the store down below uh, where you can kind of pick one of these up. I think it ships from Poland, so maybe there is a 3D design online. So if you have a 3D printer, you could print one yourself, but I do like the quality of the actual material. It's a little bit squishy, which is kind of nice. And I added a Velcro strip around so that I could actually, so I could actually just use these little velcro triangles and once i put this back on here i can take some of the velcro triangles and just place them where i need marks to be and in that way i can kind of just pull to different marks really easily and at the same time also still have my distances listed around the wheel. So what I traditionally do as far as the marking discs go, I cover it in little quarter inch white gaff tape and then I basically just write down all the distances on the lens. It's something that as an AC you should really get comfortable doing, kind of looking at distances by eye and being able to judge them by eye, uh, even down to an inch. So what I recommend in the interim is actually to use a laser measure device. Um, mine is from Hilti. There are some from Bosch that are pretty good. The difference between the cheap and the expensive ones is the cheap ones are less bright, so you can't really see them if it's outside, which can be kind of an issue. Um, the Hilti I have actually has a viewfinder on it, so when I'm pressing the button, I can look through it and see exactly where or what I'm measuring. So that's something I'll do when I'm first day seeing on film specifically. I also have a rangefinder now, so I'm really thankful for that. So it kind of gives me real time readouts without me or my second having to go over to the camera with the laser, get that distance and come back. So it does help out quite a bit, but um, they are kind of prohibitively expensive for people just starting out, which is why I recommend either a tape measure or a laser measure. So another thing I'd recommend is to get either a loop of paracord or a carabiner or something to hold all of your different marking discs. So when they come off like this, you can just kind of clip them into a carabiner or put them on some paracord or whatever and carry them with you or put them on a stand depending on if you're doing run and gun or not. Now the next modification I've made is these little triangles and putting a little strip of Velcro on the front here. So basically these little triangles I actually printed out from my label maker. It's the Brother P-Touch something. I'll again have that down below in the description so you can take a look. I think I got it off of Amazon. Um, literally one of the best label makers I've had. I've had a few, usually the cheaper ones just don't, the labels don't last. So that's why I do recommend spending a little bit of money if you are gonna get a label maker. So basically what I did is I took the printouts from the label maker, I kept them in one sheet, and then I put a strip of hard side Velcro on that sheet. Um, 
And then that way I just cut out the triangles and that's how I have these little triangles here. Now, one thing that's kind of annoying that doesn't come with the follow focus unit itself is an airy rosette connector for the back. It just has these two kind of bizarre screws. So obviously what I'd recommend is for basically everybody is to immediately pick this up if you're gonna get the Nucleus M. Um, this kind of gives you a ton of different mounting options. And what I have done specifically is taken this little bracket. I again, I forget the company, but it'll be in the description. And basically what I do with this bracket is I just pop it on here and then I have a 15 millimeter rod. So that's kind of nice because now you can kind of put it a bunch of different places. There's a lot of adaptability in this and not to mention that the 15 millimeter rod, I can tighten it really easily and I can also loosen it and walk away with the unit really easily. So if I don't necessarily need the monitor for a specific shot, say we have marks or I'm just kind of watching by eye, I can go ahead and just take this and walk away with it and I'm good to go. Now, next up, what we have as the backbone of the system is the wooden camera director's cage V3. This is a monitor cage. And the reason I went with this is specifically because it allows for a gold mount plate on the back, which is really nice for these small HDs that don't have the gold mount plates on the back. Now you can buy an adapter for this, but what I found it really needed was a place to also put a Teradek. And so that's the reason I actually went with this cage. If you kind of look at the back, there's enough space back here for a Teradek, um, for your cables, and then behind all of that, you have the singular gold mount plate. Now the cage itself didn't actually come with a gold mount plate. So I did end up getting this off of eBay. I think it was used. What you really wanna look for though, if you do do get a gold mount plate is that it has a two D taps on it. And so that allows me to power the monitor as well as a tear deck without any issue. So with that, let's go ahead and move on to the monitor, which is the small HD 702 bright. Uh, the reason I went with the bright model specifically and kind of searched it out is because it's kind of one of the, one of the brightest older monitors out there. So this isn't necessarily a current gen monitor. However, I found it to be very, very reliable, a great screen on there. And it has a thousand nits, which isn't the best by today's standards, but it is more than enough for 95% of situations. The only time that, you know, it wouldn't necessarily be ideal is kind of indirect sunlight. And in that case, you have courtesies that GE will get you, or you have monitor hoods that you can buy extra, or they actually come with this specific cage. So what I use to power the 702 Bright is a dummy LPE6 battery with a D-tap. I actually use a Lent Equip Safe Tap on the back. I think that's how you say the company name. Um, <clears throat> The reason I recommend Lent Equip Safe Taps is because there is kind of an issue with 6G and 12G SDI cables, and even to a certain extent, 3G uh, and HDMI, but this is kind of a lesser issue with those two specifically. Basically, the issue arises with DTAP cables themselves. So DTAP has a positive pin and a negative pin. Now, unfortunately, if the positive pin hits first and your monitor, your Teradek, whatever, your camera is already connected up via SDI, then you can basically burn out the SDI cable. And that's because when the positive pin hits, it tries to go to ground, which then grounds itself through the SDI or the HDMI port. So that will result in burnt out ports, which is kind of a major problem. The way most people deal with this is they make sure that the power is plugged in first. And that is absolutely the behavior that everybody should be following. However, you can't really guarantee when people, especially people you don't really know are handling your equipment. So to kind of guarantee as like a specific fail safe, I have these special taps on basically all of my cables and that this ensures it won't let any power through until there is a full connection going on and therefore making the possibility of an SDI burnout much, much lower. Now, unfortunately you do have to kind of solder these on. So that's not the most ideal for a lot of people, but there are some cables that come with it pre-installed and I would highly recommend either buying these ends or looking for those specific cables. They're not the cheapest, but this is some pretty relatively cheap insurance overall. Okay, so now let's go ahead and grab the cage again, and then we can go ahead and grab the monitor. And what I end up doing is I take one of these quarter 20 to baby pin adapters, and I literally just screw in the monitor through the adapter itself.
Now you can just use a screw specifically to screw it in to the cage itself, but I found that I really didn't like the baby pin adapter they have on the back, so I just kind of leave that alone and then add this one. Um, unfortunately, there's no like center screw that I could screw it into aside from the monitor, so that's why I do it that way. Okay, now another nice feature about this cage is obviously this in the back, but the fact that it is not stuck, what you can do is unscrew this and then the whole thing can come open, which is really nice. So if you wanna put your tear deck in here and mount it, it's it works really well. So now we're gonna go ahead and take the dummy adapter. Again, I would really recommend the actual small HD one. I've had a ton of these give out, um, especially the cheaper ones. So I really would, I know it's kind of expensive, but I would recommend going with the small HD specific brand version. Now, what I use to manage cables in the back is these cable ties. Uh, I forget who they're from, but I'll go ahead and link down below. And the reason I like these specifically is a lot of people will use a type of wire that's kind of moldable and they just cut it to whatever length they need. I find that's really annoying because I always end up pricking my fingers with it. And these really aren't that expensive so i just get a bunch of them and use them on jobs and then you know try to my best to get them back at the end of the job doesn't always happen but i like these so much more i don't prick my fingers and they look nicer too okay and so now as you see i kind of just plugged in the safe tap down here the whole unit i can go ahead and close up and now let me talk about how I connect up the follow focus unit. Now what I use are these Condor Blue quick releases. I find them really nice. There is a different brand that is the original creator of them. And so I think it's CineLock. So if you want to support the original creator, go ahead and buy them from them specifically. The Condor Blue ones I think are a slightly worse machining, but they're much cheaper. So what I do is I have the one Condor Blue quick release on the top here, and then I have the second piece of it on this small rig connector block. So this is their block with uh, several quarter 20s in it. And then it has a 15 millimeter rod adapter here. And so basically I take this quick release, I just pop it on the bottom, and then I have a very small little, I think this is a small rig um, 15 millimeter rod. Um, and then from that, all I do is I pop on the follow focus itself via the 15 millimeter adapter we had earlier. Then I pop this handle back so that I can still hold it, but it's not getting in the way. And then finally what I'll do is I'll take my core Neo Slim batteries, I'll pop them on the back and there you go. She's fully set up. Now, obviously this setup is in need of some kind of transmitter. I actually have several friends that I rent from. So if one's taken up, I can usually get another. So I, at this point, haven't really felt the need to buy a Teradek personally. It's definitely something I'm looking at in the future, but at least right now it's one less piece of gear that I have to keep maintained. So I'll stick with being a little more simple for now, but if you are looking at something, I would recommend a used Teradek Bolt 300. That is a great starter option. I would stay away from some of the cheaper options as usually they have a little bit too much latency for focus pulling. They can be useful for other things, but as far as focus pulling goes, you kind of need either Teradek, I think maybe Vaxxis has an option or two, but you need something with less than 10 milliseconds of latency, which I don't think anybody except Teradek has. So with that, you can go ahead and pop it on the stand, or you can actually turn it into a run and gun mode. And so basically with the run and gun mode, we have a strap from Wooden Camera uh, that comes with the cage, as well as a sun hood that also comes with the cage. Now what I do with the strap is it comes with four connector points, and I find that to be, just just far too many connectors. So I just clip one on each side to its other connector, and then I just use two. So they have little connector points that you can pop on. And that's kind of how I specifically uh, put this together. So that way, nothing is blocked on the screen. I can still pull focus easily. You know, it kind of takes some of the weight off of my hands while I'm carrying it around. I've used this a lot this year. So this is something that's 
definitely very nice to have. Now, something I've actually used a bit less just because the screen is pretty bright. I usually don't need it, but uh, there are a few situations where I have needed it. And so for that, I have used their wooden camera sun hood. Now this hooks on in kind of a strange way, so I'll go into it a little bit, but basically you unvelcro it, it becomes this like long thing. And then you have buttons on top and then buttons on this itself. And so what you do is you button it up here and then you push the monitor hood behind the monitor itself so it hooks underneath the top bar. So now you could use it like that. That's not a bad idea to use it like that. But what I usually do just to get rid of these sides is I stuff them back here into the back portion. It's just slipping underneath, or it's slipping between the monitor and the bottom bar. And I go ahead and Velcro it in the back, kind of in this little compartment back here. Then obviously you want to tuck these sides into the cage itself as well. Um, I find that the 702 fits really nicely in here so that you can continue to have all of these things work properly. Now obviously this isn't going to be the most clean or the most lightweight solution. However, for the vast majority of setups that I've had specifically, this is a really nice and versatile setup. So later on, say you move on from this setup, what you can do is actually use this monitor cage to give to a director or a producer or whoever, and now you have a monitor in a cage that works perfectly well for a variety of situations. So with that, I'll show you guys one last time. You basically just have this here, and then this is kind of usually the position I'm using to pull focus. So that's kind of it. That's my run and gun setup. Um, kind of some of the base level of what I would recommend for a professional setup. And yeah, I think I basically covered all the bases. So if you have any questions, let me know down below or hit me up on Instagram as I'm much more likely to respond quickly there. As always, I hope you learned something or at least enjoyed watching me build this rig. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye guys.